The problem I have, all the bolt holes do not exist for the motor mount. And this hole right here, I am going to drill and tap the block. That sounds like a really bad idea, doesn't it? Hey Garage Fabbers, it's good to see you again. And if you're just joining, we've been working on my wife Caroline's 1987 Mitsubishi Mighty Max. We are completely rebuilding the air suspension and installing a turbo 4G63 engine. In the beginning for this project, we bought a running driving Eclipse. The idea was rather than buying an engine and then having to source all the pieces and parts to make it work, we'll buy a complete, perfectly good car and we'll have all the parts we need. It was a brilliant idea, if I do say so myself, except I bought the wrong Eclipse. It's going to be a pretty exciting day and potentially depressing. The way I want to build these motor mounts is to set the engine in between the frame rails in the exact position it needs to be in and then construct the motor mounts with the engine in place. So we get to see what the engine looks like in the truck for the first time, that's cool but I also need to make sure that the engine angle front to back is correct. So I'm going to attach the transmission, which means we also get to find out what the pinion angle is going to be so that we can finally finish up the axle. And I wanna attach the exhaust manifold because I'm honestly expecting some clearance issues with the frame rails because we zed the frame, we brought the frame rails up and we narrowed the frame. So I'm about 100% sure that the exhaust manifold or the turbo is going to contact the frame rails. Hopefully not, but the chances are we're gonna have to redo some exhaust and get stuff to fit. So we get to see what that looks like. And I need to make sure there's enough clearance between the engine and the radiator. So we get to put the front clip back on. So we get to see quite a bit of assembly today. It's all a dream. We have to take it all apart, but it should be kind of neat, right? Well, the motor's kind of in. Uh, we got a few snags, some stuff I was expecting, some stuff I wasn't. We've got the exhaust hitting the frame back here. This was one of the things that I was expecting. We're gonna have to rebuild this back section so that it can snake around in between the frame and the trans back there. Stuff I wasn't expecting. Looks like the turbo is going to hit the frame pretty soon. I thought I read somewhere that this can be clocked, so I'm gonna twist that out of the way if I can. And the oil filter housing, that's something I wasn't expecting. It's hitting the tabs for the lower control arms. I was planning on cutting these off anyways so that I could make them adjustable like we did in the rear, but I was planning on putting them back exactly the way they were, just my own design. That's not gonna work. I'm gonna cut off the tabs for the control arms and see if we can get this motor to drop down just a little bit more so we can get started on the engine mounts. Good morning. It's actually kind of a rough morning, if I'm being honest. I put the engine in place last night and that should be a really exciting moment, kind of signifying uh, a huge mile marker for the project. It is exciting, but what it's shown me now that it's daylight is that I have a lot of problems, all caused by yours truly. Now, if you're planning on putting a Turbo 4G in your Mighty Max, don't let my issues freak you out. Most of the problems I'm about to share with you right now are all self-inflicted because I narrowed the frame with a factory width frame. I don't see most of these problems being an issue, starting with the turbo. Currently mounted on the engine is the factory exhaust manifold with the factory turbo installed backwards. On the Eclipse, the air inlet is on the opposite side and the exhaust outlet is on this side. You can just take the turbo off and turn it around. But the side effect is that it pushes the turbo towards the outside of the car a little bit. It used to be tucked up in this little area right here. That brings the turbo really close to the control arm towers. That's plenty of room for the engine to wiggle around on the motor mount, but the problem with that is that this is where the upper control arms attach, and I don't have 
any room for that. That's kind of a problem. So I've got two solutions that I can think of right now. I can turn the turbo back around so that I can tuck it back in into this little space right here. But that means I would have to create a fancy exhaust to come up and around the back down into this hole over here. And the air inlet and outlet would have to be plumbed to come up to the front. That seems kind of ridiculous. I don't think I'm gonna do that. The other option is to leave the turbo situated the way it is, but custom make an exhaust manifold that will allow the turbo to pull in closer to the head and therefore give me more room for the upper control arms. Problem number two, and this is a really big one, the AC compressor does not fit in between the frame rails anymore. No AC, not a huge deal for me, but I promised my wife that this truck would have AC. I don't know if I need to make a really strange frame rail so that the compressor fits with the factory bracket or build my own bracket that'll just pull the compressor in tighter to the block. I really don't know on this one. Some much smaller issues are this sensor on the oil filter housing is dangerously close to the frame rail. That one's not a big deal. I wouldn't mind just cutting a hole in there similar to these holes back there. There's not a whole lot of weight being held on the frame up here, so who cares? Or I could just get a smaller sensor perhaps. A much less serious issue is the oil pan is hanging down below the engine cross member just a little bit. And remember, this cross member is going to lay on the ground when we air the suspension out, which means the oil pan is going to hit first. And if we drag this truck, we're going to drag a hole right through the oil pan. That's no good. So I either need to modify the oil pan a little bit and the pickup inside to pick it up off the ground, or I just need to lift the front of the engine up giving it a little bit more tilt. Lifting the motor wouldn't be all bad though, because currently my engine is resting on my cross member. So if I were to leave the motor where it was at, I would need to clearance out this cross member that we just made. Not a big deal, but I don't really want to do that. So maybe lifting the motor is a better option. After propping the engine up on a couple wooden blocks, the engine is now in at the height that I want and the angle that I want. All that's left is front to back spacing. I'm happy with how much space I have back behind the motor at the moment, but I don't know what kind of space I'm gonna have in front of the radiator. So the only thing I can think of to do is to install my front clip, at least temporarily, and the radiator with the fans on it and see what kind of clearance I have to see if the motor needs to move back or forward or whatever. I'm missing some pieces at the moment, but I got the important ones. I got the radiator. It appears that there is plenty of room right now. The stuff I'm missing is the crank pulley. I don't know how far that sticks out, but I looked up some photos and it doesn't look like it sticks out much further than the water pump pulley. So I've got plenty of room. I could potentially move the engine forward a little bit. Now would be the time to do it, but I can't decide if I want to push it forward or just leave it where it's at. I got to rebuild the firewall anyways. So modifying the firewall a little bit to clearance some items in the back of the head, which I know you sometimes have to do, is not that big a deal but i think i'm just gonna keep it right where it's at right now and we're gonna start making some mounts remember the tantrum i was throwing at the beginning of this video about how my motor is not the right motor well there's a couple different choices when picking a 4g63 for the mighty max there's a six bolt and a seven bolt i really don't want to get too in depth on that it's like really boring unless you're doing the swap let's just say i got the seven bolt and there are several issues with doing a swap into a mighty max with the seven bolt motor we're going to talk about each each one individually as I come across them, but the one right now is you are supposed to be able to use the Mighty Max engine mounts to bolt the 4G63 directly into your truck. The problem I have with the seven bolt, all the bolt holes do not exist for the motor mount. I think I threw away my Mighty Max mounts, so I'm not even sure what holes they're supposed to use. So here's the plan. I'm gonna make some plates that fit these two holes and this hole right here that doesn't exist yet. I'm going to drill and tap the block for that rear bolt. That sounds like a really bad idea, doesn't it? I'm gonna start by building a plate that bolts to the side of the block. And then we're gonna start attaching some tabs for some bushing mounts. Where's my bushing? I'm going to be using these for the engine mounts. Super simple design, let's get to it. All right, I've never made block plates for motor mounts before, so I'm kind of winging this one. I've been planning this in my head while laying in bed at night, and I've got some ideas that if they work, they'll be quite brilliant, and it should work with 
any engine that you're doing. The big issue is making some steel plates with holes that match the holes in the block. So how do you do that? I'm gonna start by making some special service tools out of some bolts, and then we'll go from there. The purpose of the pointy studs is essentially punches that will transfer the location of the holes to some quarter inch MDF, which will then become a tracing template to create the steel plate. There's some sort of plug in the block right there. I'm not sure what that is, but that's getting in the way. So let's try this. Nice. So our polyurethane bushing mounts are gonna float in space right about here. And I got a couple ideas on how to make some tabs for this. We're making cardstock templates again, but today we're gonna make a movable one. That should be fun. So my bushing is two inches wide. So I'm going to set a compass at one inch and draw a couple of circles. I'm using a compass this time rather than tracing the bushing because I actually need the center point because I want to make two cardstock templates that hinge on one another. Now we've got our bushing with some tab material in the center point. I'm going to stick a nail through both of them so that I can put them together. And we now have a movable cardstock template. We're going to make this fit in between the motor and the cross member. Hopefully I don't mess this up, but I'm going to trim this a little bit. All right, to start, our template is too big, which is what I wanted. I didn't want it to be too small. This might be a bad idea, but I want this bushing to be centered in between the plate and the cross member. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim both of these pieces at the same time, a little bit at a time until it fits. That was probably way too much right off the bat. Oh, that's actually pretty good. I think I would like to drop it down here a little bit more right in between the bolts. That's pretty close. Just a touch more. There it is. I'm gonna keep that one right there. There's our brackets. Let's go make them out of metal already. All right, I need to cut out four tabs total for these bushings. Two of them are going to be a complete bushing tab, similar to what you might see on some suspension that we've done before. And then two of them are going to be just this bottom section right here very small pieces of metal that fit the outer shell of this bushing assembly. So I'm gonna make all those out of some quarter inch, two inch wide flat stock.
wooden plate that we made for the left side bolts directly up to the right side with the front bolts. That's awesome. The rear bolts are a little different though because this side only has the one bolt in the rear somewhere around in this location. I want to use the same pointy stud method to figure out exactly where the hole goes, but before I can do that, I need to drill and tap the block. And in order to do that, I need to pull the motor. I don't wanna pull the motor and put it in and pull the motor and put it in and pull the motor and put it in. So what I think I'm going to do is skip ahead and I'm going to turn this wooden plate into a metal plate so that I can weld the bushings in place, even though I don't know where the rear hole is yet. And then once everything's welded together, then I'll pull the motor one final time and figure out where those holes need to go. I know that the rear hole is located on the intersection of this rib on the block and this rib on the block. So I'm going to mark the approximate location. So the hole should be somewhere around in this area. So this plate doesn't need to be nearly as big. So I'll trim a lot of it off. And since there's only one hole, I'll probably get creative and cut off these corners. these bar ends for some link bars I was going to make so they have zerk fitting holes in them. I don't think engine mounts need zerk fittings but they're there so why not make sure that they're accessible. mounts are in place with the mock-up bushings installed and oh my god they look so good they are ready to be welded into place but before i do i'm going to check the engine and make sure that it's in the position it needs to be in because when i weld it in place it's going to be locked into that position forever so i need to make sure that the motor is level it doesn't look like it but it is my floor isn't level you're just gonna have to trust me on that one the motor is centered I'm judging that just by the spark plug holes with this center oval in the back, which I determined was the center of the cab a long time ago. Underneath, the oil pan is up above the cross member a little bit, so we shouldn't drag that on the ground because we don't want a hole in the oil pan. And lastly, the transmission tail shaft is centered in the hole inside the truck. So everything is good. Let's weld this thing on. Spots I can't weld until I take this apart. But other than that, these are fully welded up and ready to go. All that's left is to drill a hole in the back of the plate there and drill a hole in the block. Ooh, it's been a really good day so far. Place your bets. Is it going to end a really good day or is it gonna end a really bad day? Let's find out. what we're drilling right there. I'm going to drill it at about one inch deep. There shouldn't be anything going on there up to one inch. I hope not. 
The hole I'm drilling is for this bolt, which is a metric 10 by 1.25. I've got a 10 by 1.25 tap standing by, and I looked up on the interwebs and found that the drill for this tap is an 11 30 seconds. So this is the full size that this hole is going to be, but my plan is to start with a smaller drill bit and slowly step it up until we get to this bit. What I like to do, rather than just trusting the internet, I like to take that drill bit and drill into some plastic or some wood so that I can test the tap and make sure that that drill bit is not too big in case it was a typo or somebody just didn't know what they were talking about. It seems okay. This is just wood, so it's a hell of a lot easier to tap than steel, so it's at least not too big. We're gonna drill it out with this drill bit and see what happens. I think we're getting close to an inch already, so I'm going to mark the drill bit. It'll keep me from drilling too far. This is the last drill bit before tapping. So far, so good. I've been able to feel the bottom of the hole for all the other drill bits. I feel like I'm going past one inch suddenly. So I'm gonna mark the drill bit again. Oh! I think it's time to tap this puppy, huh? Mm -hmm. left to do is to find out how much of a spacer I need back behind this bolt because there's a little bit of space and I don't want to tighten this bolt down without a spacer back there so we're just gonna figure out how big that spacer is slap that on there and we are done with these motor mounts oh yeah and I gotta weld this up too the way I'm gonna figure out how big of a spacer I need is just to put a bolt in until it hits the block and then then mark the bolt with my fingernail right on the outside of this plate. So from the outside of the plate to the block is about three quarters of an inch. And this is a quarter inch plate. So we're gonna subtract a quarter inch from three quarters of an inch and that's a half inch. I need a half inch spacer on the back side of this to space out between the block and this plate. Let me go cut that out real fast. Well, today's a win for hoarding. I save silly stuff like this. These are just some spacers I made out of some DOM tubing. Uh, I think for a suicide door, I don't remember. But guess what? It's already a half inch wide and the bolt fits through there with a little bit of room. This is perfect. It's a perfect little spacer. I'm just gonna weld this to the back and then try it out. And I think these motor mounts are done. <laughs> I'm running out of light. I gotta try this right now. And it's still hot. 
Ow! I can finish welding this stuff up in the dark. I cannot, on the other hand, film in the dark. So, once again, I'm rushing to get a video done. <laughs> That's awesome. That is absolutely perfect. Well, guys, it is finally done. Let me see if I can get a shot of that spacer in the back. There it is. A hole that didn't exist before and a motor mount that was not meant for this motor. It is a good day. Finding out that I bought the wrong motor for this swap was a huge kick in the sack. And this was just the beginning of the challenges that this swap is gonna throw at us. But that's life. Things don't always go as planned. Just stop for a moment, breathe, and keep moving forward. I'll see you in the next one, my friends.